Ich hoffe, so viel. Amen. Hi there, my name's Paul Clydesdale. I'm part of the Full and Mill team, specialising in pike fly tying and pike fly fishing for around 20 odd years now. We're here at Rutland Water today and we're going to be specifically trying to target large pike on the fly, pike over 20 pounds. Feels like a good day, we've got a nice light breeze, we don't want the boat moving too quickly, we just want a steady drift, we'll put the drogue out. Uh, we've got a bit of it's overcast, um, so the conditions are looking quite good today. you're targeting bigger pike the location is key you've got to know where the bigger pike are smaller pike don't tend to be in the same place as the larger pike because they get eaten uh, so if you're fishing an area where you're catching a lot of smaller pike it's maybe a good idea to move away into a different location because potentially the larger ones aren't there but we're looking for things like underwater structure drop-offs maybe humps in the water weed beds Things like that will hold large pike. I mean, my go-to tackle was uh, Vision. Vision fly rods are specifically designed for pike. They're designed by pike fly anglers, uh, for pike fly anglers. So I mean, this is a new rod out in the range uh, for Vision. This is one of the Grand Mamas. This is a nine foot nine weight fast action rod. Uh, as we said, specifically designed for pike. We've got these coupled with uh, Vision XO fly reels, again uh, we've got uh, Vision fly lines, this is the Grand Mama which has got a head length of 12.8 metres, we've got two lines in the range, uh, we've got the Vision Grand Mama uh, and the Grand Daddy, this one's the longer head of the two which is 12.8 metres as I said, I prefer when I'm casting to hold a slightly more line in the air, the, the Grand Daddy has got a shorter head, it's 8.5 metres. It's more for quickly loading the rod and blasting bigger flies out. I like to fish small flies, so I like the longer headed line. Uh, that's my, uh, that's my pref uh, preference. A lot of guys, it's been quite popular in the last few years uh, for folk to use fluorocarbon. Uh, heavy fluorocarbon is a bite tippet. Tip Personally, I prefer to use wire. You're not going to get bitten off with, with wire. There is a potential, regardless of what anybody says, I've, I've tried fluorocarbon bite tippets over the years. I've never actually been bitten off using them, but I have seen some nasty gouges in them. Uh, with wire, you're not going to get bitten off. And my preference for the wire is full and mill. They brought this uh, wire out a number of years ago. It's 49 strand, 26 pounds, nylon coated, notable wire, which is really good. I've never had it fail, uh, and this is my go-to wire. Comes with two fast arch clips. Uh, if that's what you like to use to attach your fly to the wire, personally, I prefer just tying the wire straight onto the the eye of the hook. Don't really change fly that much, and I've got uh, specific patterns that I've designed and tweaked over the years specifically for pike. Uh, Full and Mill have run with these range of flies for a number of years now, and seem, seem to be quite popular. But if I show you my fly box here. If I lift it up to the camera, you can see they're all pretty much the same. Um, they don't need a lot of flies, uh, they don't need to be fancy either. Um, but my favourite ones are probably specifically the gold perch and the silver perch. Uh, and I've got a couple of black ones there, but that's pretty much it. So we're heading up the, the north arm of Rutland uh, into a specific area. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're we'll looking for shoals of bream. Uh, to find the shoals of bream, we're looking for dirty water. Uh, the bream root, ar root around in the bottom, uh, they kick the mud up and it colours the water. So an indication of where the bream is, is if the water's dirty. We're also looking for like broken blades of grass or weed on the surface. If the bream are in the weed, breaking that up, it floats to the surface. That's other, another indication of where the bream are. If we can find the bream, uh, generally the pike won't be too far away. Swans can be a good indication as well because when the bream break up the weed and it floats to the surface, swans will eat the weed. 
So if we can find some swans as well on the surface, feeding in a specific area, that could be an indication of where the bream is as well. I'm going to start off uh, my vision uh, uh, nine foot, nine weight Merasula. It's a fast action rod. Again, we've got uh, an XO reel on here and we've got an intermediate line on here. Um, you can fish intermediate lines on Rutland from five foot right up to 25 foot. Don't be afraid to fish high up in the water. In Rutland, the pike will travel a great distance to intercept your fly. So we'll start off with the intermediate line and we've got depths here between about five and 25 feet. So this line here is perfect for that. Uh, we're also using one of my full and mill gold perch again. Uh, this is a really good fly uh, for any conditions. I mean, this this is a, an imitation of perch, but it can represent uh, small bream and stuff like that as well. But the difference with this one is it's tied slightly different. If you notice, the matching materials are tied on the side of the shank as opposed to uh, the conventional way. And we've also got some light bead chain on the front as well. So what I'm going to do here is uh, we're going to bring it back and try imitate an injured fish. I, I travel through the UK uh, uh, for pike. Uh, I'll fish in Scotland. Uh, I fish in England a lot. My real passion is targeting the the. Uh, trout waters in England, the likes of Rutland, Grafham, Chew, all these places, because they get to an exceptional size. So I, do a lot, I spend a lot of time down in England fly fishing for pike. Really what we are looking for is 20 pounders, uh, anything above 20 pounds, 20 or 20 pounds, anything above 25 is really notable, but generally we're looking for 20 pounders. I've had them up to 36 pounds, I've had four 30s, uh, I don't know how many 20s I've had, I've lots, I stopped, stopped counting them a while ago. Oh, oh, man. It's not what we're targeting, but the, that specific fly, that jigging action, it's the, the jigging action that fly is really good for any of the predators, so and potentially you could pick up a pike, you could pick up a zander, and uh, that's a nice perch that the, the jig flies picked up. Oh, 315. So the other important bits and pieces you need to carry is you need some sort of unhooking equipment. So here's a perfect example of what we use. It's a Baker hook out. So it's a long reach pair of pliers that we can get right down the back of a pike's throat if it swallows the fly right down and get it out. We've also got a pair of uh, Vision long nose forceps here as well. They've also got a cutting edge on them as well for cutting your wire. So I've got these tucked into the side here. So I know where they are all the time. Uh, we've also got a set of ribbon heating scales uh, in case we've got a large pike, these go up to £60. Pounds. We've got the crossbar to hook on it as well to make them easier to hold. Uh, and on the floor as well we've got a mat uh, to protect the pike um, and we've also got a sling there for weighing it. Uh, so I'm also carrying spare fly lines as well. It's quite easy to damage a fly line when you're out fly fishing, whether it be gets stood on or uh, whether it ends up around a propeller. So if you're travelling long distances, uh, it's always handy to take uh, spare fly lines with you. So we've got an intermediate here, and we've also got a sink three. So they're the two lines that I probably use the most. Hook file, that's quite important to carry out as well. Um, your flies can get blunt at times. If you get stuck in the bottom or hit the side of the boat, you can take the edge off the, the hook. So it's quite important to carry one of these as well and check it on a regular basis just to make sure it is sharp enough. Yeah, that's a tiddler. Seriously, that's a, that's a small, that's a small. It's a nice fish, but it's, it's a small fish. They're looking for something a lot bigger than that. So it's been a bit slow this morning. Uh, guys, it's won about £11. Uh, 
we're just grinding it out at the moment and hopefully they should turn on at some point this afternoon. They might only switch on for an hour, uh, it could only be half an hour, 45 minutes, so it's crucial to be in that place where they are when they do switch on. So we'll just keep going over them, changing the angles, changing the lines, uh, and hopefully at some point they will switch on. It's been quite a difficult day today. Uh, a few followers for big fish this morning that weren't able to connect, um, uh, convert into takers went uh, dead in the afternoon. A couple of swallows, uh, a decent perch, but uh, it's been hard work. But that's targeting big pike on the fly. Um, go long, long hours without anything at all. And unfortunately, today is one of the days where we haven't been able to connect with a big one.